today we're going to be talking about Spelt. Everyone's talking about Spelt, it's a bit of an unusual framework, and we're going to find out why Spelt is doing things their own way and what exactly that means. And for that we've got with us here Sam, who is our in-house Spelt guy, who's going to tell us a bit more about that, uh, and we're going to dig a bit into this. Hey Phil. Uh, yeah, Spelt is definitely unusual in that they've um, kind of changed the web development game a little bit by kind of like putting their own spin on how you do web development. Personally, I really love it. I think it's really comfortable to work with and kind of gets some of the like uh, annoying parts of web development out of the way so you can just you know get started really quickly and make cool stuff. W- what do you mean by the annoying parts that they get out of the way? How do you explain it? Um, most web development so far has used like um, a programming language to kind of like assemble HTML, right? Mm-hmm. So like um, we have two frameworks that are really popular, React and Vue. Yeah. And what they try to do is use HTML and JavaScript so that like theoretically they can like assemble a, w- a web page in your browser. Okay. What Svelte does is they simplify a lot of like the programming logic into some like really simple syntax uh, that is neither JavaScript nor HTML. It's kind of like Svelte's own thing that just like simplifies really common uses. So like um, in React, if you need to loop over something, typically you would use JavaScript to run like a for loop or map an array or reduce an array or something like that. Okay. Svelte just has a really simple little like each block that will loop over a bunch of elements and, uh, and render them. When you see it, it like looks quite intuitive and easy to understand when you read it. Mm-hmm. So it makes your code more readable and it makes the the writing, you know, writing code like uh, a little easier. Okay. So for me, it maybe sounds a little like Vue, do, telling Vue what to do in HTML. So, yeah. you, you know, you create a HTML block and you say for each block like this and then yeah. you pr- pass it the data as props. It's very similar to Vue, it's true. Um, The key difference is that with both Vue and React, in theory, you can run that code directly in the browser. Okay. The the written, uh, like originally, these the frameworks got popular, you know, a few years back, for creating single page applications. Yeah. Where like you could use Vue or React and pair it with a router library, and like you could run an entire application with multiple pages. Mm Mm-hmm as like from like a single page of HTML. Yeah. Svelte decided to take a different approach in that you can't run Svelte in the browser. It's not like a, a, a valid um, syntax that okay. will work. Svelte, you write in Node or um, you know on your computer Yeah. and you have to compile it before you send it to the browser. That's very different from a uh, typical Node uh, like React or Vue application. Um, but the irony of that is the way that the web development uh, ecosystem has changed is that everything's compiled now. So it doesn't really make a difference. Like even if you're writing in Vue or React, while theoretically you could send that code straight to the browser, in practice nobody's ever going to do that because compiling uh, can shrink your code to make it faster. Mm -hmm. It can like uh, optimize your code speed with tree shaking. It can uh, make your code backwards compatible with older browsers. So realistically, if you're going to compile it anyway, why not make it easier to write? Okay, that's interesting. And so when you're talking about the compiling part, because you have to compile it before you see it in the browser, how does that affect the development experience in terms of speed there and then when you want to see a change that you're working on? And that's something that's pretty amazing about Svelte's technology. So Svelte is built on Rollup and Vite, okay. which are new um, like uh, compiling bundling uh software Mm -hmm. and it's so fast that you can literally type um, text in your Svelte project and Mm -hmm. have hot reloading in your browser that's literally live like within milliseconds so you can be coding in in live time which is you know I think probably much faster than if you were doing it in React. That's really interesting because I just learned a bit about Vite and and that it seems a perfect use case for it. Yeah, it's it's amazing how fast it is and how it's changing, you know, uh, developer workflows. You said Svelte is really fast. Uh, yeah. So how is that? That is uh, a part of like from day one. That was part of what they were doing with Svelte. Um, it's really important to them that uh, websites and web apps be like very easily accessible, which is something as developers we often forget about. It's you know very common for a simple web page to be 
100 kilobytes, 150 kilobytes, you know, 200 kilobytes. Mm. And we forget that that can create a lot of bloat, slow down a web page, mm -hmm. you know, create actual like uh, lag on somebody's, you know, if somebody's trying to access that page on their phone on a bus, you know. Yeah. So from day one, Svelte was built to be really fast. Um, they, uh, the fir one of the first things is that they don't ship a library uh, to the browser. Okay. They actually compile, because it's compiled, they can compile your code down to vanilla JavaScript. What do you what do you mean by uh, sending a library to the browser? Right. So with React, because your code can like you can write React code and, and send it to the browser and okay. run it in the browser, you also need to send the React package to the browser so that it can like add all the functionality to your code, handle okay. everything, you know, manipulate the DOM. Svelte takes your Svelte code and it compiles it down to vanilla JavaScript and makes okay. it as small as it possibly can. Okay. So because it's compiled, it can send a lot less code to the browser. It, okay. it knows exactly what, what your application needs and only sends that. Um, it's designed to be as optimal as possible. So you get really small uh, packages and you know, the, the, um, you know, the Svelte team, they're even like, uh, you, maybe you don't need JavaScript. So uh, with Svelte kit, you can actually turn off, um, JavaScript for okay. specific pages or your apps. So if you don't care about like um, client side routing, like you know being able to uh, click from page to page, uh, like in a single page app mode, mm -hmm. you can actually uh, create an application with SvelteKit that actually doesn't ship any JavaScript to the browser, making it like um, a much smaller initial page load. Uh, on top of that, they're very uh, big supporters of progressive enhancement, meaning that like you use um, basic web development tools, like for instance, forms and links, mm -hmm. like hrefs, uh, the way you would have used them 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, and then you add JavaScript on top as kind of like an enhancement. Okay. So like uh, a form is really powerful HTML element. You can actually like use like a form with no JavaScript, but then like if you want like nice loading or kind of like a form submit without page reload, mm -hmm. then you can add, add JavaScript to do that, but you don't necessarily need it. And yeah. so Svelte encourages developers to do that progressive enhancement, which will make more performant, more accessible uh, web apps. Okay, awesome. So kind of like trying to get it as simple as possible so it works as well yeah. uh, with the browser as it yeah. can. It's like, let's make this work as quickly as possible on as many devices as possible. You know, we often forget like... Uh, you know, there are billions of internet users around the world, and not all of them are on 4G or 5G. You know, there's still a lot of people on 3G, still a lot of people using pay-as-you-go data plans that are paying, you know, like, actually, like, significant amount of money just to download a single website. Yeah. Very true. And, uh, yeah, that, that also affects SEO, too. Yeah. The faster your website, the better your SEO ranking. Yeah. Tons of benefits, tons of benefits. Okay. We talked about benefits. Are there any downsides to Svelte? Like, is it all... Uh, it's it's hard Sweetness. to it's hard to talk about downsides in modern web development because there's sort of like workarounds for everything, right? Okay. Like any problem that you can come up against, you can probably figure out a way to deal with it. Yeah, I think a, a more useful way to think about it is probably in terms of like ergonomics, like what's comfortable, what's easy, you know, like yeah. what's it designed for, like um, a nice keyboard, <laughs> having mm. a nice keyboard, having nice packages, uh, mm -hmm. like. Uh, you know, if you like data visualization, Svelte has a really big data viz community. So like good integrations with like D3, for example. Um, so it has good ergonomics for data visualization. But in terms of the downsides, it's like if you like writing, uh, like scripting, you mm -hmm. know, like JavaScript or other scripting languages, uh, Svelte's a little bit more restrictive in that way. Uh, for instance, Svelte has a built-in each block for iterating, iterating over lists, yeah. but that's the only iterator. So for instance, in React, you could use for each, you could use a for loop, you can use map, mm. you can use reduce. Mm -hmm. You have all of these different, you know, all of JavaScript's different uh, array prototypes, uh, array methods. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people really love using React yeah. because you've got anything that you can use in JavaScript, you yeah. can use in React. And you can string those all together, you know, sort and filter and everything. Uh, you can really become like a array uh, method wizard, you know? Mm -hmm. In Svelte, it's just each block. Okay. So 
that works. It doesn't it doesn't stop you from doing anything, but it means that you have to do your business logic mm -hmm. in your script tag and then render your block, you know, as in each block. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit restrictive. It's pushing you to do something to do that a certain way. Same with um if blocks in Svelte. Svelte just has um one block for uh, if else. Um whereas in React you could do like uh you could use a switch. Um, you can write ternaries, mm -hmm. you know. In Svelte, like, those are still available one way or another, mm -hmm. but you can't uh, integrate them into your templates as um, seamlessly. Okay. You know, you have to kind of sort your, uh, separate your JavaScript from your HTML a little bit more. So okay. that can be a little restrictive if you really like using those JavaScript methods and that JavaScript syntax. Svelte's going to push you to do it their way a little more. Okay, so it's definitely an, an opinionated technology. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Um, and so you feel that's maybe the biggest challenge for people using Svelte rather than maybe a downside? So far, what it seems is that Svelte's opinions are widely held opinions. Mm -hmm. So people who try Svelte, it feels natural. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem like I haven't seen people complaining about the Svelte syntax. But you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to what you're comfortable with. Yeah. There's certainly no correct framework if you like coding in WordPress or Java or uh, you know C sharp, <laughs> whatever. You know, it's all about what you're comfortable with. That's what you're going to be the most productive with. Mm -hmm. um, so the Svelte syntax is a really nice syntax. Try it out. You know, they have great tutorials. If you like that syntax, if it feels intuitive and comfortable and productive for you, go with it. If you try it out and you decide that you like React more, you know, that's totally valid. And if you want to maybe test out Svelte right now and you want to get in and dig, dig around and play with that with Prismic, check out our docs, prismic.io forward slash docs. In there, you're going to find everything to get you up and going with Svelte. And there's some sample projects, I believe, in there as well. Uh, we don't have sample projects yet. Uh, we're working on those. You know, it's coming along with our Slice Machine support, which is something we'll be talking more about in the future. Ah. Uh, so we don't have sample projects yet, but um, you can find lots of code examples. And um, uh, I mean, even just hit me up on Twitter if you want um, an example of a specific example, because we've got um, we've created some demos and stuff that okay. we can share. Okay, nice. Uh, I believe you have a demo for us right now. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so this is not a Prismic demo. This is just a demo of um, to show a little bit what it's like coding with Svelte. Okay. Um, show some of the cool syntax that I was just talking about. Um, so if you've coded with React, Svelte is going to look uh, a bit different. It's definitely more similar to Vue. Um, the way peop I've heard it explained before uh, with regards to React and Vue is that React is like HTML in JavaScript and Vue is like JavaScript in HTML. What does that mean? If you really love JavaScript and you really love a, like a like a real programming language and mm -hmm. writing scripts, then you're going to be comfortable with React because you're writing JavaScript and your JavaScript is just outputting HTML basically. Yeah, you're saying like when this function is satisfied, print this HTML. Yeah, exactly. If you are more of like a web person, like you like HTML, you like the platform, um, then Vue is really nice because you're, you're writing HTML and then you're just kind of like adding JavaScript to it. Now, Svelte kind of takes that Vue model of JavaScript and HTML, mm -hmm. and I would say takes it even a little bit further. It's like when you're writing Vue, you're really starting with HTML okay. and then adding some JavaScript to it. So what you can see here um, is that we've got a script tag. Uh, in that script tag, you can actually declare a variable, and then you can just inject your variable directly into um, your template like that. So you okay. can see we're like writing text, and you're asking um, about the compiling. You know, you can see how quickly that text is outputting as we type it into the script tag yeah, there. Yeah, I see, okay. So you can just inject um, your variables. You, you declare your variable in your script tag, and then you just it's automatically it in your available. Template. Yeah, straight away. You don't have to do any um, imports or anything. Automatic imports. Uh, yeah. You don't have to worry about any imports here or anything. This is uh, this all just happens in the com uh, in the compiling. Okay. Yeah. So then next, what we're going to show is how two-way binding works. Okay. Which is something that's important in all of these frameworks. Okay. So basically, we're going to create an input, and we're going to um, uh, bind the value of that input 
to that variable up there. So you can see here we've got a text input. Okay. Okay, so instead of maybe getting value from the script, adding it into the HTML, you're getting the value in the HTML that's been input yeah. and send it back to the script? Yeah. Wow, okay. And you can see, you know, you can type in the input and it'll appear, you know, wherever you use that variable in your HTML. Um, now, what this app is going to do is we're going to create like a little list maker. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we need for that, text input so you can write an item. And then this button that we're coding here is just going to um, add the, um, the content of the text box to an array. Okay. And then uh, render that array in a list. You can see that list right now is uh, we need like um, to render that. So we're yeah. using an each block to iterate over that array of items. Yeah and uh, render each item that we've added uh, as a bullet point there. Okay. So, All right. So, so far we've used like a two-way binding using an each block. Um, now, I thought it'd be cool if you could choose a color for each item. So mm -hmm. we're doing the exact same thing that we did with the text text uh, box there. Okay. Um, just using a color thing. Mm -hmm. So you can um, select a color and it'll sync to that variable. And um, then we'll create like... Um, We'll make it so that you can actually see the text that you're typing in, and you can choose a color for the text as you're typing it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here you can choose some text, and then uh, select color for it, and then add it to the list. Ah. Sick. Okay. Yeah. yeah it does for for me as a as a, a view guy. Like I really I like working with you because mm -hmm. my head, from what I learned in the past, was always HTML first. Yeah. And that's why I, it was almost mu always much easier for me to learn view. I can see how this takes that same kind of mm -hmm. structure here. And yeah, it's it, it feels very easy to understand coming from that side of things. Yeah. So also, like, it, what they're trying to do is give you syntax to make, like, the more complicated parts of web development as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can see here, um, like, the each block is just, like, rather than having to, like, worry about, like, uh, using, like, an array prototype like you would in JavaScript, it's just like a, a simple little uh, syntax that just says, you know, loop over each item and and uh, and then handle it individually. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I think is really cool, you can see on line 23 here, um, you can uh, they have this cool syntax for injecting a style with um, JavaScript. Uh -huh. So you say style colon and then the name of the style. So mm -hmm. in this case, it's color. And then you uh, can pass in a variable. That's awesome. And it'll just set that inline style like that for you. So that's how we're um, adding colors to our list items here. That's really cool. Yeah. That that's always I know a, a bit of a pain. Yeah, and it's that's definitely a big difference between Svelte and React. That um, uh, in React there are so many different ways to handle styling, mm -hmm. and in Svelte it's like it's pretty intuitive and it's pretty explicit. It's like you're going to inject your styles in style tags in mm -hmm. your or or directly in line in your components. You can like import style sheets and they have support for global styles, but uh, you know, I find it pretty comfortable. And then so this is uh, the finished product. You can uh, enter some text, select a color for the text and add it to your list and just like that just in a few minutes we've got a little um application. So that's that's awesome. It, it feels like every day they, all this work that these people are doing is just making working with JavaScript and making building websites with JavaScript. Now we're in the the Jamstack world, just easier and easier for people to understand. And yeah, and use. I just watched um, Rich Harris's keynote from um, Svelte Summit, and uh, one of his first slides is, "Web development is too damn hard." <laughs> and I think as developers, we want to feel like we're really skilled. We want to feel like we're really good at something. Naturally, everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's cool when you're learning all these new tools and all these new technologies that like you're like, I can do things bigger and better and like more nuanced. But I think we also need to remember that like anybody should be able to publish a website, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, anybody should be able to write a little bit of HTML and CSS and put a, a website on the web. And uh, you know, we're talking a lot about like web 2.0, web 3.0, but you know, when you go back to web 1.0, just putting up a website mm -hmm. in 2022 that's still really hard yeah and so i think svelte is taking us in the direction of you know making that easier for you know the average person that's awesome 
Well, thanks, Sam. I really enjoyed talking to you. I really learned a lot there in terms of spelt because it's not something I, I'm, I've known a lot about before. Thanks and for taking uh, the time. Yeah, 100%, man. It's good to have you over from Scotland in the studio. <laughs> Always oh, a joy. And if uh, anybody else wants to learn a bit more about spelt, don't be afraid to reach out to us or Sam on Twitter, on the forum. Uh, leave us some comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to check out Sam's spelt demo, it's going to be somewhere around here. Uh, so thanks for watching and I hope you learned a lot too.